hitting those perfectly solid iron shots. Everybody wants to do them. Why is it so daggone hard? Well, I'm gonna talk about how the vast majority of players are completely out of position with their body and it makes it impossible to really hit it solid. So Q's got the flight scope here. He's gonna read some of the numbers on the radar and I'm gonna walk you through some drills step by step that makes it easy to compress those shots. All right, so first let's talk about what most players that I see are doing that's making it really tough to hit it solid. So in the downswing, the hips are kind of coming toward the ball, standing up a little bit. That gets my chest, or if you can imagine my shirt buttons, getting farther away from this golf ball. And then the only thing I can do from there is to flip to make contact. I lose all the forward shaft lane that the pros are having, and I get thin shots. If you're hitting a lot of shots kind of thin on the bottom of the club, if you see your ball not really leaving with the kind of speed that you want, it doesn't really pop off the face. It doesn't have that sound that you hear when you go listen to the pros hit shots this video is gonna be perfect for you. So we don't want that hips going toward it, body backing up and flip. You'll also notice when I'm doing this, everything's square to the ball. We're gonna talk about why that's a real you know, bad thing when you're talking about compressing the golf ball. So now let's go over the right way to do this. Now, when you come into contact, let's focus in on the lower body first, the hips, knees, and legs. So as I rotate open, as you come to contact, I want my hips to be about 45 degrees open. The reason for that is if my hips are square, very difficult to have forward shaft lean. It's actually impossible to get your hands in front of your body or in front of your lower body in the swing. There's just no way to do it. Your hands aren't fast enough and strong enough to push this club all the way across the body. So instead of doing this to get forward shaft lean and my body hasn't opened, that's never gonna happen. I've never seen one player that's been able to do that. You have to do this to get forward shaft lean. So as the body opens up, my hips get about 45, maybe in a little more than 45 degrees open for some players on the PGA Tour, that's gonna to help them to get their hands or your hands more in front of the golf ball. When you do that, it actually takes loft off the club and you get more compression and more ball speed. So first, let me show you with this little impact or this little uh, face angle finder here, this little magnet. When I set this up, there's no forward shaft lane. Look how there's quite a bit of loft on that club face. That's gonna get more of a glancing blow across the ball. Watch what happens when I get my hips more open. I can start to lean the, the handle forward and I'm taking loft off the face. Pros take about 30% of the natural loft off the club when they're coming to impact. So if an eight iron has somewhere in the mid 30s, 35, 37, 38 degrees of loft standard, pros are turning that down anywhere from 25 to 29 degrees of loft at impact. That allows more energy to transfer into the golf ball and a faster ball speed. So the first key to doing that is getting those hips to open. Now here's the real key with that. When I'm standing up, my hips are going toward the golf ball and I'm flipping, look how my right foot goes this way. It comes forward and off the ground as I stand up out of the shot, but it doesn't rotate out. When I open my hips, I want my right foot to start to swivel this way. That's the feeling that you're gonna have. I'm really exaggerating there so you can see it, but I want my spikes to start turning out more toward the camera at the back. I don't want my spikes to go up this way. I want them to go that way. So again, that allows me to rotate my hips as I'm coming through the ball. You can start to see how my, my foot is swiveling out. So it's going this way instead of this way. So let's do a couple drills there. Go to impact, hips open, right foot, the heel, starts to go out that direction. I'm really pushing it that way. That allows me to get my hips opening up. The feeling I'd have there is that my belt buckle is actually toward the target when I make contact. That's never gonna happen, but that's a good sensation for you to have, especially if you're a stand up flip kind of player that really struggles compressing the golf ball. So let me try one of those out. I got an eight iron here. I'm gonna try to get less than 30 degrees of dynamic loft loft on the ball at club at impact, and I'm gonna to try to see if I can get my hips nice and open just like I wanna be. Let's give it a whirl. There we go, that looked pretty good. Just to the right of the flag slightly. And what was my dynamic loft on that one, Q? What was my total distance? Uh, dynamic loft was 23.3 degrees and total distance was 175.9 yards. Okay, so not bad with an eight iron. And I was, how many degrees of dynamic loft? 23.3. Uh, so I really got it low, slightly thin, so that may have made it read even a little bit lower than I wanted, but not a bad shot. I'll definitely take 170 something with an eight iron in the middle of the green. Now the second piece here is my chest. 
One thing that most players have never been told before is that when you hit a shot, you actually want your chest to be opening up too. When I come to impact, my hips are about 45 degrees open. PJ Tour player's chest or their rib cage, what's called your thorax, is about 20 degrees open on average. The only reason it doesn't look open is because my left arm is cinched across my chest and now my shoulders look square because my left arm is essentially doing this as I'm an impact. So you can really feel, if you've ever heard somebody say, stay connected, that's that left arm kind of coming across the chest like that. My left bicep here is really cinched tight against my left pec. If I had my hand in there, I really feel like I almost couldn't pull it out. When I'm at impact, that's that connected feeling I wanna have. That's my entire body helping to lean that shaft forward. Let me go ahead and hit another one here, and I'm really gonna feel like my chest is opening and my left side of my body, my left arm, is pressed together and that's gonna be really nice and tight there. Let's go ahead and try that one out and we'll see what the numbers are on that. There we go, that's right at the flag. A little better hit than the one before. What are the numbers on that one, Q? That one's actually really tight. I'm not gonna do much better than that. Yeah, so 22.5 uh, dynamic loft and the total distance was 178.4 yards. So we're getting close to 180 and I'm almost taking a little too much loft off there, which is fine, that's a, that's a good problem to have. Now, lastly, with that same idea, if your body is opening up, the dog wants in on this drill. The, the body opens up, the left arm is across the body. Look if I turn my hips and my body back toward the camera. My left arm is across my body like this. Again, if you're standing up and flipping, your hands are trying to push across your body this way. I need my hands back here at impact if I'm gonna have forward shaft lean. If that's where my hands are at impact, as I get my body in position, now we can see that's a really, really good spot. So feel like your body's opening up, your hands are almost on the right side of your body as you're coming into contact. Let me go ahead and hit another one there and feel like that. Again, my body's opening, my hands almost feel like they're in front of my right hip when I make contact in this golf ball. There we go, and that was really solid there. I'm not gonna hit one a lot better than that. That one was a little more solid on the face. May show a little bit more dynamic loft on that one. What were the numbers on that one, Q? So numbers on that one were 22.4 dynamic loft and 180 total yards. Yeah, so that one really caught it nice, all the way up to 180, 22 dynamic loft. So I'm not gonna do much better than that. There's one piece of this that you're still gonna get wrong, even if you're doing your hips and your body. Now, most players tend to get this right arm overactive flip the club out here and kind of push it across their body with the right arm. The real key here, and I kind of alluded to this in the last part of this, this last drill, where I said your arms actually want to feel like they're back here at impact, is that I have to square the face by rotating the club. If I don't do this, I'm going to block it to the right. I'm going to slice it every single time if I get in the right impact position. So here's how we do this. If I come into impact, if I come halfway down, my body's in a good position. I'm, my right elbow is tight to my body. My club is lagging here, but my face is wide open. As I open up and rotate, my face is pointing way out there to the right somewhere. I have to do this motion where I take my left wrist and bow it. I take the club head and turn it down to the ground. That's what squares up the face. Now, when I rotate through, look how I've taken all this loft off, but my club face is square. When you do this drill at home, do the same thing. Pause here, right elbow tucked in, bunch of lag with the club, and then I'm gonna rotate this face square. When I come to impact, my face should look dead square to the target. My face shouldn't be open like that at all. It has to be square to the target. That's how you know you're doing this correctly. Do a few reps where you come to here, feel that, go to impact, feel that, and then you're gonna go back to your normal swing and try to recreate that same sensation and get tons of compression. All right, so another good one there, just left of the flag. Not gonna do a lot better than that. What were the stats on that, Q? Uh, dynamic loft was 26.1 degrees and total distance went up to 181.2 yards. Yeah, so hit those nice. Anything under 30 degrees of dynamic loft, you're gonna be compressing it pretty well. Now, in the last part of the video, I really talked about that squaring of the face. That's what I call the move in the top speed golf system. And I actually have a drill on that called the tennis racket drill. I'm gonna play a little clip of that here in a second. And it's gonna walk you through some of the real tricks if you're struggling to square the face like that, some of the real tricks to make that easy for you. If you're not able to hit a really compressed draw, 
that video is gonna be perfect for you. So I'll play a preview of that here in a second. Just go ahead and click the card that pops up on the screen. If you don't see the card, don't worry. Go down to the description and click the link there. You'll get instant access to the tennis racket drill. And I'm gonna show you some of the real secrets on how to use the wrist. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down, as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, which you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players, is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane, as I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, 